So I was going to ask you, speaking of women, does your wife still think you're a hotshot director? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did okay. I think she saw the movie and um, I was allowed to come home and she said the funniest thing after seeing the movie, which all the action and the big stuff and the visual effects, she, she said, you should have shown this to me three months ago. I would have been much nicer to you for the last three months. <laughs> All those times I said, how come you're not coming home? It's midnight. I realized, oh, this wasn't so fun for you. <laughs> wow. I mean, I love, I mean, to take something like uh, the Fantasia thing and make that homage, which was one of my favorite parts. That, how awesome was that to do that It was homage? really fun. It was like a gift to be given the chance to recreate that scene from Fantasia. The pressure to do it well is enormous. You know that everyone's going to be judging you or saying, oh, that's not as good, or why they ruin the original scene, all that stuff. And, and you also want it to belong in the movie. It has to fit. And so because it's not its own, it, living on itself, it has to live within a greater movie. We had to really work it so that it, it belongs. So the story aspects were tricky enough, let alone all the visual effects and making mobs look real and water look real and telling an actor and building a set with, with 12 inches of water in it and telling Jay to go run around in it, but don't get your pants too wet. <laughs> Not easy. I think Mickey Mouse would have been proud. <laughs> yeah, well, Mickey Mouse, the ink would have run if he had been on my set. It would have been horrible for him. <laughs> but it is pretty incredible. I guess that was the sort of source of this um, Sorcerer's Apprentice. Yeah. Um, nice. But to expand it into this incredible story was pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah, and, and I fortunately came on the project late enough where all of the really hard legwork of turning an eight minute movie into an hour and 48 minute movie had been done already. Yeah. Um, really developing who is this sorcerer and who is the apprentice and what are their backstories and what have they been doing? How could they be alive in modern day New York City? Yeah. All that stuff is so intriguing and so mysterious and had been so fleshed out that you know I could focus more on just bringing all that stuff to life and making it exciting and special and funny and, and, yeah. and warm. What was the essence for you in terms of characters? The, the, was it the relationship between the sorcerer and, and most the important relation? It's a really a relationship movie. It's a kind of a love story in a way, a romantic comedy where the sorcerer and the apprentice are the two parts, and it's really boy meets apprentice, boy loses apprentice, mm -hmm. boy gets apprentice. Um, the 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 growth and the change in the character of Nick and Jay is really the the story you follow the most intimately. They each have their own very similar and. Uh, symmetrical and tragic love stories going on that are very beautiful and heartbreaking and, and very romantic. But the key relationship is between those two men. Mm. What's so good about Nicolas Cage in these roles? I mean, I think he was saying he brings like the, well, he's done so many films with Jerry. Um, so yeah. what is it that he brings to these kinds of films, do you feel? Nick has a sense of danger about him, unpredictability to him, so, and a real strong masculinity. So that there's, there, it, it just all adds up to strength. Um, but there's also a calm and a confidence that Nick has. Those, that combination of those things is everything to playing this character of the sorcerer. That Dave needs to fear him but feel safe around him at the same time. And that's where the fun in, in the relationship is. Dave pushing his buttons and testing him and being afraid of him but also realizing he's there to save his neck. I think it also says it's kind of a bit of a Valentine to New York as well, which is sort of. I'm glad that's coming off. We yeah. really wanted to, to make New York a character in the movie and make it look amazing, look magical, look exciting, because it's such a, a, a it's an earthy, real place. It's a gritty place. It's, it's the great equalizer, New York City. You know, it's the one city in the world I think where millionaires and homeless people walk side by side down the street. And it's certainly the only place in the United States really like that. And that's the, the beauty of New York. Um, and at night, New York is a magical place, really, is, especially when all the people go to bed and you're the only one awake directing <laughs> car accidents. Especially there's kind of uh, lightning y things going on ahead of you, like that. Cool, <laughs> that right? That would be cool. <laughs> Movie's cool. New York is cool. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh,